Hi everybody, and welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to uh, georeference a drone image, in particular this drone image right here. And uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to use a drone image to follow along an example that Esri published in Arc User Magazine, so you can see how much easier the process is in Manifold. Uh, we started by importing this uh, drone image from the uh, files that we downloaded from Esri. It's a plain, ordinary uh, a JPEG. We clicked File, Import, clicked on the JPEG, then we clicked Import, and that created this uh, image right here. We don't have to do any prep work on it, none of the Stone Age stuff that Esri wants you to do with aligning the uh, uh, image or anything like that. We just uh, click Control Points and we go off to the races. And we're going to reference that to this uh, map that we created here, which is a uh, view of using Google Satellite of the equivalent location. It's a, a, t a town called Everson in uh, upstate uh, uh, Washington State. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for features that are similar, like, for example, the breaks between concrete and asphalt here and so forth that appear in both images, and we're going to mark them with control points. So to do that, we're going to start with the image, and we're going to click here in the cursor control and choose Edit Control Points. The cursor changes to this uh, Edit Control Points mode, and the register pane automatically flicks in into action. And uh, we can still do all the pan and zooming that we're used to doing in Manifold. Right-click to uh, and drag to pan and zoom. So I could put first control point there, second tr control point here, Notice that control points automatically add up. And uh, another control point I'll put up here where the uh, there's a juncture between the asphalt and the grass. Then I'll put a control point here where there's a juncture between uh, concrete and asphalt. And I'm trying to pick things which aren't likely to move all that much because you want to pick things that kind of you know, tend to stay the same in uh, different sorts of images. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what else we want to do. Let's uh, hmm, Let's go right here. Choose this, and here's another juncture where we can choose it's, that appears in both uh, the map and the uh, the drone image. And then, last but not least, I'm going to click down here, and right here at the ground spot where the uh, where the where this uh, building hits the ground, I'm going to click a control point right there. You can see there's some skew because the drone is looking at this partially sideways in the photo. And there we've added uh, six control points, and now let's add corresponding control points to the map. When I click on the map to move the focus there. Uh, there's no control points in it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the image that I want to georegister, and that's going to be EV001. And Manifold automatically brings in the control points that I've marked from that EV001 image. None of them have plus signs here yet, which means we haven't marked matching control points. So let's do some of that. Click Edit Control Points, and we can start matching control points. As you recall, the first two were down here. Now, to make this easier, I'm going to undock these windows so I can look at both windows at the same time. And there's EV00. I'm, I'm just simply shift-clicking the uh, tab or the uh, caption bar to dock and undock images. And it's kind of a hassle to do uh, geo-registration and uh, this tiny screen real estate that, that, uh, that you get with YouTube videos. Uh, normally, you'd be doing this in a full-size monitor or even two monitors, so there's plenty of room to have both the uh, image that you're geo-referencing and the, uh, you know, the target uh, that you're using open at the same time. Uh, so we're going to do these first two there. And I'm going to zoom and right-click to zoom in here. So I'm going to pick, click the first one here. And if I open up, if I bring the undock the georegister pane to bring it to the fore, you can see that Manifold automatically put a plus sign here to indicate this one is matched. And it's moved the cursor bar down to the next one to uh, show that one's going to be the next one matched. You can see we put the plus sign there. Okay, now what did we do third? We did this, uh, uh, did that, uh, that juncture up there. So let's, uh, where is that? That's right here. And you can see that even though the, t the two different scenes are rotated, it's still fairly easy to, uh, you know, get your bearings and to, uh, you know, match the things that you want to match. The next one was down here. As I recall, there's a little, yeah, right there is the juncture where the uh, concrete ends. And uh, there's another one down here, as I recall, which is right there. Okay. And uh, where was the last one where we put the, ah, it was right down here at the building. And because it's now, this is now seen in a completely overhead view, we're going to click it right there, which is equivalent to the, you know, putting it down where the, marking it where the building hit the ground on the uh, on this uh, drone image. So now we have uh, six control points marked. You can see there's a plus sign next to all of them. Uh, there are six control points that are marked here and here. So uh, let's go to town, and uh, I'm going to dock these things to get back to uh, using the maximum real estate for the map. Let's dock the register pane. And what I can do is I can choose the method that I want to use, a fine... Uh, order 1.5, order 2 polynomial, and all that stuff. Let's start with the fine, and let's do a preview to see what that's going to what that's going to create. Manifold isn't actually georeferencing it; it's, it's going to georeference the image and do it a preview and show us a preview in a map. And if, if we like, we can zoom in here to see how good is that preview to see how well it lines up. 
And to make it easier to see how it lines up, we can do things like split screen effects. This is sort of a uh, equivalent to, I guess, uh, I forget what Ezra calls it, I think reveal or something like that. And you can see as we move this back and forth how well this preview image in tones of blue it actually lines up remarkably well with these uh, lines. And if we choose a different method like a uh, find plus cross product, click preview, manifold will do the recalculation. It calculates so fast that you don't have to be afraid of, uh, and we can double click this to uh, click this on and off to turn the preview off, off and on. Let's go back to left screen view again. And you can see that's still a, that's still a pretty good preview right there. Uh, let's go to the uh, full size uh, view and uh, let's take a look at a different end of it. Let's see how it looks down here at the uh, bridge, at the end of the bridge. And we can see that the uh, fine uh, plus one cross product is an uh, Let's see what square does. And that doesn't look like it's quite as well aligned. I mean, they're all pretty close and it's remarkably close even for uh, uh, for just doing a, a six control points. I'll use the basic order one of fine and let's see how that works. So let's click let register. And what Manifold will do when it registers the uh, image, it automatically creates a new image for us called EV0012. It iterates it. It doesn't change the original image at all. It just creates a new one for us. So if what we can do is we can drag and drop that new image into the map and see how well it lines up with Google Satellite. And we can see that it uh, lines up very well. Let's look down here and we can see that these uh, road lines and the uh, the barrier lines up lines up remarkably well, and uh, what we have here is a completely perfectly uh, uh, geo-registered image that it uh, that is lined up exactly with Google uh, Satellite. This is the drone image that we started with, and uh, by using only six control points, we have a remarkably good association. One of the things you can do with uh, previews is by using the previews, you can see where it doesn't match quite well depending on whatever method you're using, and you can go back and you can add you know more control points to this image, and then do the preview again you know, to with matching control points and then, you know, maybe delete some control points and maybe add some more control points. And that tinker time with Manifold is extremely rapid and very, very easy to do. And it's exactly the same, by the way, process both in rasters and in vectors. Whereas with Esri, you get these uh, two entirely different systems where, you know, for rasters you have georeferencing and for uh, vectors you have their uh, uh, kind of a wildly uh, kludgy uh, spatial adjust adjustment tool, which is com completely different user interface. Anyway, be that as it may, you've seen how quick and easy it is in Manifold. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. You can do all this in the free viewer. Uh, download the free viewer and yeah, give it a try with your own data. In fact, uh, reproduce the uh, the example that uh, as we published in uh, Arc User. You can uh, download all the stuff that they used uh, and uh, import it from the GDB projects into Manifold and uh, uh, give it a whirl and see how, how well it goes and how much easier it is in Manifold. Thanks for watching and goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.